Hey guys, so today I'm going to be making some repairs to my kiln. Um, as you can tell, I have run this thing through hell and back. Um, spilled some aluminum here on the front. Uh, this glass is fogged up and cracked. Um, and the big thing that needs to be repaired at the moment is the inside. Get a good look in here. So what had happened? Um, originally, uh, this whole thing was this color. Um, I had a crucible in here break and the borax, the hot liquid borax that I was using for the flux just ate right through this and created a huge hole. So we had picked up the um, cement mix to patch it up from the company that makes the kilns. I had patched it up and over the course of time it shrank quite a bit. And then on top of that, I had another crucible break and spilled borax everywhere. I did have a graphite plate in here that fit exactly in here uh, perfectly. Uh, but over time, graphite burns. And so this is what's left of that plate. And uh, of course the crucible would break whenever that thing is pretty much gone. So what I need to do is I need to make up some cement and fill this in. But first, I have to try to take out all of this old cement. Well, as you can see, that's going to be kind of easy. But I have to also go through and remove any borax that is left in here. Because if it uh, gets fired up while borax is still in here, I'm going to have the same problem again. Now, what I'm going to be using to patch this up with is this cement that I got from the manufacturer and perlite. Uh, perlite is awesome to use as an aggregate for furnaces and kilns whenever you're going to be pouring cement for them. Uh, it's super lightweight, so whatever you're making, uh, you can actually carry it around, and it's really heat resistant. So this one I'm going to be using as an aggregate in the hopes that it prevents them from shrinking so much, uh, as you saw along the edges here. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the camera set up on the tripod and start removing this stuff in here. So now I have all of the old cement, the bad cement removed, and any borax uh, that was left in here, I got chipped out. Uh, the black you see in here is the leftover from that graphite plate that I had in there. Uh, I didn't think it was too much of a big deal to have to worry about get all that, getting all that out. I just needed to primarily get the borax out so it doesn't continue to eat through once it turns to liquid. I've also got a spot right up here. Come on, focus. Here we go that needs to be patched up uh, that holds the coils. So I have some perlite here and this cement calls for four parts cement and one part water. So I'm going to do two cups of cement and a half cup of water and we're going to stir that up and throw it in here.
Okay, so I've got it all filled in and I ran through with my finger um, and filled in any all the, uh, the holes that was left over just from all the times of using it. I also got this part up here patched. So I'm gonna let this sit and dry, well, set for uh, 24 hours. So tomorrow I'm going to come out here and we're going to fire up the kiln uh, very slowly probably bring it up just a couple hundred degrees to make sure that we can push any moisture that is left in here out. And then we're going to go ahead and fire down some copper. So it has been a couple weeks since I have done this. Um, I just hadn't found the time to come out here and mess with it anymore. Um, but now that I do, I, what I need to do now is sand it down. I've got some high points that I can take out and I didn't quite get this corner as well as I was hoping I would. Um, but I mean, it, it should be good enough to put a crucible in here. And then I have a crucible, a graphite crucible full of copper crystals, um, that I had grown in a previous video and we're going to melt them down into a bar. So let me go ahead and get the sanding on this. I'm just going to take a sandpaper and rub it around and take off any high points so it can sit flat in there and then we'll see how it melts it down. So I've got the crucible in here and it's starting to warm up. It's, we're approaching about 1200 degrees. Um, I find that this pyrometer after about 1500 degrees is pretty much useless and inaccurate. Uh, not to mention you can't really read it anyway. Uh, so we just got to take a peek in there, see how things are doing. It's venting off a bit. But uh, it looks like it's, it's working. Um, I'll pick up the camera once the copper is melted down and we are ready to pour it. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this. I don't know how well you can see that. It is almost done. I would say another five or ten minutes and it will be ready. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is start torching up this mold. Uh, getting it nice and hot and then we will pull it out pour it in and I'm gonna let it sit in here for maybe a minute or so and then I'm gonna immediately put it in water uh, purpose behind that is because the sudden contraction of the copper will oftentimes do a lot of work for you in breaking off any um, flux or anything that happens to be stuck to the surface of it so let me go ahead and torch this down and we will pick this back up when it's ready to pour <laughs> that fire that you see is the crucible burning. It's the carbon reacting with the oxygen to form CO2. That uh, concrete patch seems to be holding up just fine. So now we're just going to let this sit and harden for a minute or so, and then we're going to immediately dunk it in water. You can see all the black spots. That is the flux and stuff that will hopefully crack off when we throw it in the water. So we have our finished product here. One side's not very good looking. Um, the other side is not bad. Uh, you can avoid getting a lot of these pits and stuff by heating up your crucible hotter than what I heated mine up to. But it's it's really not too bad. It's pure copper and it'll get added into the stack. And the point of everything was to test this concrete, this patch here. And it seems solid, even while hot. Uh, the lesser stuff I had before, would, whenever it was hot like this and you would tap it, it would start to crumble. Um, you can kind of see where it shrunk a little bit. You can see the orange line coming through here. I don't know how well it's going to pick up on the camera. But uh, you can see where it shrunk just a little bit around the edges. But I think that is going to work. 